Hello friends. So today we will be talking about a very important topic which is metabolic acidosis and alkalosis. In this series of acid-based disorders, we have already discussed three, four topics. And now this uh, today we will be talking about this very important component, which is very important in our anesthesia as well as critical care practice. Metabolic acidosis is a life-threatening situation which we face very often in our practices in critical ill patients. The patients may have some underlying diabetic ketoacidosis or severe lactic acidosis, which is quite common. And the treatment is tailored to reverse these process so that we can make our patients better. Whereas metabolic alkalosis, although it is fairly common, it is not that much life-threatening. That means it, can, it will give you some time for analysis and you can... Uh, work on that and uh, you can go to the diagnosis and then uh, give the proper treatment for the patient. So for this lecture, so the outline of my presentation would be about basic approach about the metabolic acidosis and alkalosis, and ion gaps, what is uh, high anion gap metabolic acidosis, normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. We'll be talking about some gaps like osmolar gap, delta gap, urine anion gap, urine osmolar gap. We'll be talking about role of buffer therapy and lastly about the metabolic acidosis. So coming to metabolic acidosis. So metabolic acidosis is the condition where the abnormal primary process has led to increase in fixed acids in the blood. That means the acid level has increased. And when the acid level increases, your pH will decrease. The pH will be less than 7.35 and your bicarbonates will also decrease, which will be less than 22. Since we cannot directly measure the H plus ions, so uh, the bicarbonates are taken as the surrogate markers. So what are the adverse consequences of the severe acidemia, especially the metabolic one? So metabolic acidemia has the major impact on cardiovascular system or the circulatory system. It can reduce the myocardial contractility. It can reduce the threshold for arrhythmias. And it can also reduce the response to catecholamines, which is very important from critical care point of view. That means the patient will have low ejection fractions, low stroke volumes and leading to shock. And arrhythmias can also further worsen the shock. And the treatment which you are instituting may not be having that much of response, which you actually want. So that is where uh, the role of uh, Correcting the underlying disorder for aspenia is there. It can also have uh, huge metabolic uh, uh, changes. It can reduce the ATP synthesis. There will be protein catabolism. And it can lead to hyperkalemia and acute renal injury. There can be neurological inhibition of uh, cerebral metabolism, which can lead to lethargy and comatose situation. And to compensate for this severe metabolic aspenia, the patient will try to hyperventilate, which will lead to increase in work of breathing and fatigue. So, in uh, short, if, if we discuss about the clinical picture, the patient will be having decreased muscle tone, reflection, there will be confusion and drowsiness. The patient will have, will have classical small respiration, which is because of compensation response. There will be complaints of headache, hypotension, there can be hyperkalemia, muscle twitching, nausea, vomiting. These all things can happen. So when a patient comes to you with a metabolic acidosis, you have to first confirm it by the, uh, having a pH of less than 7.35, which will be confirming the acidemia. Then if it is uh, bicarbonate is less than 22, then it is metabolic in nature. Then you have to uh, check for the compensation. The compensation formula is PaCO2. The expected PaCO2 is 1.5 into the bicarbonate levels plus 8 plus minus 2. And then you calculate the anion gap. Okay. And anion gap is equal to the gap between the cations and the measured cations and the measured anions. So that is sodium minus chloride minus bicarbonate. And if the patient is having uh, hypoalbuminemia, then correction can also be given, which is corrected anion gap is equal to anion gap plus 2.5, 4 minus albumin levels. If you do not have albumin levels, you take anion gap as it is. So what is anion gap and why are we stressing on this anion gap? 
So anion gap is the estimate of unmeasured ion in the plasma. Okay. So we measure some anions. We can measure some cations. We can measure cations like sodium. Sodium is the major one. We also measure calcium, magnesium, potassium. But the value of these are not very high and they do not vary that much. Uh, so that is why in anion gap, we only take sodium as the major cation. And the major anions which can be calculated is chloride and the bicarbonate. And the difference between the two becomes the anion gap. So this is the anion gap. So we can see here, this is the major cation, which is the sodium. This is the major uh, anion, which is the chloride. And this is the bicarbonate. And these are the unmeasured anions. And this includes phosphorus, proteins, and many other small anions, which we cannot measure routinely. So this is the anion gap. Okay. So why it is important to know uh, the cause? Because if we see that in patients of metabolic acidosis, the bicarbonate level will reduce. This blue part will be reduced. So now when this blue part is reduced, it has to be compensated by something else. Okay. So either it can be compensated by increase in the anion gaps or it can be there because of increase in the chloride with having a normal anion gap. So when the anion gap increases and the bicarbonate decreases, this is called as the high anion gap metabolic acidosis. And when the anion gap remains normal and the bicarbonate decreases with increase in the chloride, then it is called as normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. This is very important. We are, I will repeat here. So anion gap, when the anion gap increases, the bicarbonate will decrease and the chloride will remain the same. So this is called high anion gap metabolic acidosis. And when the anion gap is same, but bicarbonate is decreased because chloride has increased. That is called as normal anion gap metabolic process. The limitation of this anion gap is are not much because uh, it is fairly uh, used uh, and uh, the machines are now very much adapted to these things and it is now um, the accuracy has improved, but still it is estimated and correction of albumin is an approximation. The uses of anion gap is to identify the cause of acidosis, to identify the mixed disorders, and to track the resolution of ketosis in PKA patients. So we can have normal anion gap metabolic, metabolic acidosis. There, uh, when we calculate, we calculate the urine anion gap. And uh, whether it is negative or positive, this will be discussed in, uh, in next few slides. And for high anion gap metabolic acidosis, we calculate delta gap as well as the osmolar gap. So now coming to the high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So this is the uh, high anion gap metabolic acidosis etiology. So we can, uh, if you remember our MBBS days, we had to remember a few mnemonics like mud piles and other ones. But they do not cover all the major causes of high anion gap metabol metabolic acidosis. So this is now the more commonly used, um, what we can say is uh, mnemonic. So this is Merkel septic. So Merkel is M for methanol, metformin, U for uremia, R for renal failure, K for ketoacidosis, alcoholic, diabetic, and starvation, L for lactic acidosis, E for ethanol, S for salicylate, E for ethylene glycol, P for paraldehyde and propylene gly glycol, T for toluene, I for iron and isomia Z and C for cyanide and carbon monoxide. So this covers most of our major reasons which can cause high in hand gap metabolic acidosis. There are many medications which can cause high in hand gap metabolic acidosis. So I've covered this in this slide. So one can be beta agonist excess, especially in patients uh, who are having COPD or asthma and they need a lot of nebulization because of the precipitation of their episodes. So there uh, uh, we can have nebulization with epinephrine or albuterol very uh, significantly uh, in significant amounts and that can lead to ion and gap metabolic acidosis. Then linezolate, metformins, NRTIs, propofol, again very important, uh, especially for anesthesia point of view, propylene glycol intoxication, nitroprusides, valproic acid, topiramine. So these are the uh, common causes for high and gap metabolic acidosis.